Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. I'm Northwest Juice Gaming and what we're going to be covering today is advancements. I am going to break this up into three different parts. The first part will be overview of the settings, the second part will be procedure conditions and triggers, and the third part will be how to set up different types of rewards. So with that being said, let's go into our inventory, our pause screen, and we'll take a look at what we have for advancements. So if we click on this, as you can see, nothing really shows up as we haven't done anything in this world. There is a few things that we can do. If we were to actually, I think we, if we use a hoe and plant something quickly, so say seeds, we would get our parent model for husbandry. So if we go back to our advancements, as you can see, now we have unlocked two different things that we can basically do. So the first thing would be to do whatever that is. And then the next thing that we would need to do is plant some seeds. And then we would basically go and eat a balanced diet. So that would be like advanced thing. And then a whole bunch of different other things show up after that, right? We're going to be doing something like that. If we create a simple trigger and if we scroll down, I actually have one that is example. So if we open this up, as you can see, we got an advancement. And if we go to our advancements tab, we now have a advancement icon and we have a background and we have a title for our main parent. And then we also have a description of how to obtain the advancement as well. So in our case, a obtain a generic item. So let's hop into Mcrater and I'll show you how the settings work. So you will need two things for sure. If you're going with a background, you're going to need a background as well. I suggest doing something that is not tiled. So something that's seamless. I haven't, I don't think I've done a tutorial on how to make seamless textures in for Minecraft yet, but maybe in the future I will. For the item, this is what's going to be used for your actual advancement icon. So you can basically make this a non-usable item or you could just use something from your mod if you wanted to as well. And the advancement is where all the technical stuff happens. So first things first, let's go and cover all these settings here and I'll explain how they all work. The first thing is the advancement GUI name. This is what the title of the advancement will be. If it's a parent model, this is what the parent name will be as well. Now for the advancement description, this should be how to obtain it generally. For the parent, it's not really necessary to actually have a way to obtain it you could just have a description of what the advancement is for that would be fine too so things like advancement for cctv craft or something like that right and then under that is your advancement icon this is the item that you, or block that you can basically select to display as your icon for your tab the advancement background needs to be a 16 by 16 image. I think you can go larger, but uh, the vanilla basic image is 16 by 16. I've just used a other texture to basically display that particular background. Next is the advancement type. Uh, there isn't really anything particular for these outside of the shape of them. So tasks are basic, basic kind of circle, round, square things. The goals are a little bit more different styled and the challenges are a lot different. So you can choose between the shape of the little box that displays your icon. And advancement parent, this is basically what tab the advancement nests under. If it's set to no parent, then it creates a new tab. After that, what we have is show toast when complete. Well, this is basically for the little message icon when you actually complete the task. It pops out at the top uh, right corner and it basically says you completed the task and stuff like that. So that's basically what that is. Generally, you want that enabled. If you don't, that's fine too. Announce in chat when complete. This basically lets other players know that you've achieved that particular advancement. You can disable or enable that if you want to. Hide if 
not complete yet. So this is good for if you're creating a new parent and you don't want it to display automatically. Generally, you want this disabled if the if it's nesting under a parent though, because it'll be hidden up to a certain point until it's displayed. So if it, I think it only shows two things after. So it'll be your parent and then it'll be a task one and then tasks two and then it will hide the rest normally. But if you do this, then it'll be hidden until it's complete. Now the hide advancement display is a little bit different. It's not like hide if not complete yet. It's something a little bit different. So if you basically want to create an advancement but not show it under the tab itself, you can enable this and even though it's complete, it won't show. This is handy if you wanted to test for say multiple things at once to reach an actual ad advancement. So for example, if you wanted to test if the player has killed a pig and a cow and a chicken, you could set those up with this checkbox. So you can enable that. And then if all, if the condition of all three of those advancements are true, then what you could do is you basically could have one without the checkbox and then say that you've killed a chicken, pig, and cow. Then this won't actually show, but the chicken, pig, and cow one will. Moving on to the advancements logic. Now this is basically rewards and stuff like that. I won't get into too much details with this particularly, but if you want to set XP, set a function, if you want to give the player a loot table, those are all different things as well. And if you want basically to give them recipes to unlock, now that's an interesting mechanic. I'll explain that in a future video in the third one. And under that is the advanced trigger builder. Now there's different types of conditions and things that you can basically do built in. Now the one that I have set up is under logic and it's custom trigger and it says using procedures and or commands. Now you can enable, you can drop this onto the uh, box here and you have a lot more control over what you can do for your conditions. So I usually use that, but there are some other built-in options that you can basically do. For example, like if a block is placed, then you can basically run a condition there. If an item is consumed, some other things like that. Uh, you can do a lot of that through procedures as well. So I usually just run it through procedures, but I'll cover that in the next part. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.